Holy crap, is it another Cooler Master NR200 video? Not really, but also sort of, kind of. This is my last NR200. I have more than one. This is the last, in the configuration for the last build video that I did. We get the EK 120 millimeter uh, pump reservoir combo at the back. I've made some new holes. This is a dual 240 millimeter radiator setup. This is set up and good to go for Alder Lake. Yeah, dual radiators in this tiny little thing, uh, along with an EVGA 3080 FTW3. That's the one with the really, really, really wide printed circuit board. It literally will not fit in smaller cases like the Encase M1. Building in this case is a joy, but it can be a little hard to track down the components sometimes because I've also got the Cooler Master 850 watt SFX power supply. It's not F SFXL, the longer variant, it's truly SFX. Getting a power supply is hard enough, let alone an SFXL power supply. And building a custom loop in this, it's not for the faint of heart. Uh-oh. That's why Cooler Master have invented something or bundled something that's for the lazy person which is amazing because we should all be so lazy. Don't put this much effort into your computer. You're gonna end up spending more on the accoutrement than you did on the parts. This is the Masterbox NR200P. In this box is not just an NR200, but also an 850 watt power supply and a 280 millimeter AIO. Cooler Master gives you everything you need. Just to add computer. It's like a Chia pet. You just add a little bit of water. You're good to go. Just add a motherboard processor, RAM, and video card. You're good to go. Let's unpack. All right, so on the box, it shows you Case, water cooling, power supply. So you can pick, there's different models, obviously. We have one CPU power connector and we have four PCIe 6 plus two connectors. That's on two cables. So this will handle pretty much anything. And in case you're wondering, will this work with Alder Lake? Yes, it absolutely will. If you're gonna unleash all 16 of those puppies, you're gonna need a lot of cooling. The Alder Lake puppies, that is. The accessory box. This is the tempered glass side panel. That's optional. Don't worry, you have the mesh side panel as well. Twins! Twins, Basil! Twins! All right, so this is a little bit lighter finish. It's the light gray, but you've also got the vertical triple slot GPU bracket, which was an optional accessory on this. Now, as you can see, I've got mesh on both sides, but it does come with the optional tempered glass side panel if you feel you don't need the airflow. We'll come back to that. Now to be sure, this is an NR200. It's just got the vertical GPU accessory. So, there's goodies on the inside, just like a very expensive pinata. There you go, this lets you sort of see what's going on in here. Our 280 millimeter cooler at the top with the fans and the bracket mounting thing and the power supply and everything is already mounted and ready to go. Radiator, and they even used all the screws, all eight of them. Boom! This would be an excellent product for low volume OEMs. You could just order a bunch of these, throw in some ITX motherboards, and your assembly costs would basically be nothing. You know, throw in a couple drives and you're good to go. All right, so in your accessory box, you have your Cooler Master PCI Express 4 right angle GPU bracket. So this is necessary to vertically mount your GPU but it is PCI Express 4. These are pretty hard to come by right now. The supply is still pretty tight on those. And then this is all of the mounting stuff for the AIO. So it'll do AM4, LGA 1700, uh, 1200. It'll do basically everything of the last 10 years, pretty much. Check the box, you know, for your specific compatibility. But basically everything you need is right there. We're gonna build an X570 system with this one because, well, the CPU doesn't really need all that much cooling. And I think we can go air cooling for the GPU as well and be fine. Cause hey, it's triple slot and hey, it'll breathe from this side. So it's good stuff. Oh, oh boy, it's a chunker. Also included in the accessory box, don't lose them, are extra SATA and Molex power cables. So depending on what your build out is, you might need you know some SATA or Molex cables. Well, they're right there. In case you're not familiar with the NR200 case, we do have two front panel USB five gigabits per second ports, a combo headphone, microphone jack, power button, and reset button. I'm a little bit surprised they did not update the front panel connector to include USB-C, but hey, not bad. So what do we have for our build? I've got the ORS X570 Mini ITX because it's got dual M.2 slots and this is literally the only X570 motherboard that I have that's an ITX that actually works correctly. 
if you're gonna do a build like this, you gotta obviously do a 5900X or a 5950. I mean, a 5800X wouldn't quite cut it, in my opinion, because this is a relatively high, high-end build. Um, if you were contemplating a build like this and thinking about the 5800X, go for a cheaper desktop build and get a 5900X. And you can thank me later, because, oh boy, 12 cores? 12 cores is pretty awesome. And it's not just because 12 cores, it's because you get double the cash, because there's two chiplets. It's a thing, I promise. Oh, and we've also got 64 gigabytes of memory. Yeah, this little ITX board, 64 gigabytes of memory with our relatively inexpensive OLOY memory kit. I picked that up on Newegg. Haven't been able to find a G-Skill Trident Z kit actually in stock that's 64 gigabytes for this board, but this is 3600 too, which is nice. Now inside the case, even though this is ITX, Cooler Master has done some nice things for cable management. So first off, if we remove that, look at that. Look at that giant piece of foam that kept the, uh, kept the uh, thing for the CPU from going anywhere. Look at that. And then you gotta rem 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 remember. And then you gotta remember to remove that. That is the cover that keeps the uh, copper from oxidizing. Another nice feature is the cables are all black and braided. Look at that, they're so pretty. I know what you're thinking. Oh no, the CPU 8-pin power connector is so hard to reach with all the stuff that's pre-installed and getting the cable in. Oh, it's gonna be so hard. Nope, that's Cooler Master. Look how easy this is. I can just reach right into the corner here and get my plug plugged in. You need a Cooler Master AM4 mounting kit. I really like this one because it's the least awful to install. And it uses the existing, you know, mounting bracket that's on the motherboard, the plastic tabs. This will pretty much only go one way. Now I know that some of you lack imagination. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Think about mounting your GPU vertically here. There's two things. Okay, the first is mesh front or tempered side panel. If you do the mesh front, you're relying on the case to draw in all the air from the bottom to cool the GPU. Most GPUs are gonna be pulling air in from the front and exhausting it out the sides. There are some GPUs, like the Founders Edition. So if you're thinking about an NVIDIA 3080 or 3090 for a build like this with the Founders Edition layout, the fan passes the hot air completely through the card. But when it's mounted vertically like this, it's gonna be hitting the power supply. In general, for best cooling, I don't know that I really even recommend vertical GPU mounting in general. In particular cases like this, it might maybe be okay, but probably not. Probably not. AIB versions of the 3080 and the 3090 have more traditional sort of cooling configurations in terms of how they manage heat. And so ultimately the hot air has got to come out the top of the case here, however it gets there. So if the design of your card exhausts the hot air, hot air to the side, that's going to be up in this case if it's mounted vertically, and you're probably fine. And especially if you add fans to the bottom of this. Yeah, Cooler Master has some pretty cool fans that are slim, and you can add those to the bottom, and that'll work fine. Of course, with the vertical mount, you don't even really have to use slim fans. Now I am using an AM4 motherboard and cooling thing for this with the 280 millimeter AIO, but I will say that I think this configuration would also be fine for Alder Lake, Intel Alder Lake. Certainly it would be fine for an 11900K, 10900K, 10850K, something like that, and it's basically about as plug and play. The mount will need a few more screws other than just the, the ones for AM4. AM4 really is the easy button in terms of CPU mounting. If you're gonna rock an Intel system with this, I think you would be fine with an i7 or an i9, even Alder Lake in this build, socket 1700. Now to finish this build, all I gotta do is connect my front panel connections, my front USB, and add a graphics card. <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. Oh, you know, it's ITX, you have to make some compromise on the GPU. No, and let me show you why. This is the MSI Supreme RTX 3090. This is pretty much the nicest air-cooled 3090 card that you can get. It is an awesome card. We've got triple power. This is not gonna work in this system, obviously, right? Wrong you don't have a single millimeter to spare. There's actually even some mounting screw holes on this end of the card so that it's, you know, it's not rubbing against plastic or anything like that. Check this out.
not a single millimeter to spare. So on this version of the NR200, you can actually take the bottom off and put the GPU in at an angle. And you can see that in some of my other review videos. With this one, you can actually take the back bracket off to make this installation a little easier. And then we can just slip it back on and we're good to go. But there's not even one millimeter of extra clearance when we're using the uh, Supreme 3090. And the Supreme 3090 will blow the hot air through the top of the card. So this can actually work pretty well. I definitely don't know that I would use the tempered glass side panel if you're gonna rock something like a 3090 because almost all of your power budget is going into your GPU. So you really want that GPU to be able to breathe. It doesn't need to be pretty. Even though this is a triple slot GPU and we've got three slots worth of brackets back here. So it'll work with something like the Founders Edition 38, 3090. I mean, you can rock that if you really want to. This really has been the most absolute fastest ITX build that I have ever done. It's literally just, just sprinkle and add water. Okay, not actually add water because the water's already in the AIO, but just add motherboard and GPU and processor and RAM and you're good to go. Everything else is in the box from Cooler Master and they've done a nice job with it. I like it. Look at that GPU. It looks so cool. The other thing that's really impressive about this system is that it's a whisper quiet. The loudest thing in the system is the GPU when it ramps up. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Cooler Master NR200 uh, or revisit from my earlier NR200 to the NR200P that bundles power supply and an all-in-one CPU cooler. And it's all pre-assembled out of the box to save you a bunch of time. Just add motherboard processor, memory, and graphics card. And you're good to go. Good job, Cooler Master. I like this. If you have any questions or you did a build with one of these and you want to show it off, come to the forums at forum.level1text.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.